an affinity designer. You can apply gradients to all kinds of different shapes. Really good one being star design. Great thing about star, you can modify in numerous ways. So to actually modify it, simply go here to the move tool. You can see with that selected, you've got all these options. Now, if you're wondering how to get this gradient design, please check out the previous video on how to add a gradient to a stroke. It goes through all the various steps. So I've got here fill, nothing, and a stroke, and I've created 18 point, something fairly small. And I'm gonna manipulate this. I don't want five, I want a bit more than that, so go for 14, 15. And also what you can do, you can also manipulate the outer circle and inner radius, and you can just try them out. You might think, let's have a go. Just maybe like that, or go that way, up to you. Also, outer circle, and this is the one I like. I really love this sort of, more like a flower design. Create some lovely flower designs, I think. And of course, you've got this lovely gradient. Now you might want to manipulate the gradient as well. So if you want to do that, as previously explained in the previous video, simply just go here to the gradient tool, go up here and select stroke. Make certain that's selected. Otherwise you're manipulating the fill, which doesn't exist. And you can see now you've got this gradient and then you can think, well, I might let's change it. Just click here and you might think the green's a bit too much. Maybe just remove it. So just select it there and then click delete and it's gone. So now you've got say a blue center. Of course, you can create a variety of different designs using this approach, but it's, it's fine. But what I want is to add a bit of depth to it. Great way of doing that. You could, of course, use other techniques, but this is one I always like. Just go to Layers. You can find that in the window menu. And just go down here to Effects, just down the bottom. Click there, and then you've got this. It's got a number of options. Now, personally, I always generally go for 3D, but you can always, of course, go for Bevel Emboss. Really nice to create all kinds of lovely three-dimensional design. That's not proper 3D. I would love to see that. Don't know why I've never added a Affinity 3D application. That would be superb. Or maybe a Persona. Hopefully, please put in the comments. Maybe one day there will be that. Do you think there will be one? I think there should be. Right. Also, of course, Affinity Video. That would be nice. So you've got 3D. And then you can go here and you can just change that. You can push it up. Don't want to push it too much. I always go for about 30. You just want a nice sort of effect where it's rounded. And also I love to add a bit of shadow. So outer shadow, I always think about the middle, seems to be about the nicest. So I just go for about that. And you've got that design. And of course you can still continue to tweak it if you want. You can always again go back to the move tool and then you can modify these various settings here in a circle as well. So change that if you want a nice rounded design there. Okay, so once you've got that, with 2.3, you've now got a great feature for scaling as well as rotation. And I really love that feature. So I'm just going to go here and move tool selected and press return or enter. It's on the keyboard, just standard return or enter on the keyboard. And with that, you've got this. Now I could go for horizontal, which moves it obviously horizontal, vertical, all those sort of things. Also distance and angle, pretty good. But the ones I really like, rotation and scale. And also duplicate. So I'm just going to go for duplicate. Now I'm just going to try it. Generally, I always go for three or four just to see how it goes. Because sometimes you think, oh, I'll go for 30 or 50 and it doesn't always work. So say eight or nine. And you can see straight away, it looks a bit bolder straight away. Also, what you can do is you can go for scale. Now you can go inwards, which I think is quite nice. But I actually quite like always going the other way. Now it goes out quite rapidly. So you might want, especially with nine, you might want to say 104. Just try it with that. And you can see you get this lovely three-dimensional effect. And this does look a bit more three-dimensional. Now, it's not particularly super smooth. It would be nice if it was to create really three-dimensional designs. But I think number of copies, you can then start to increase that. So if you just make certain, because you can push it to 115 and it just flies off the screen. Also, I want to rotate this. Don't want it just designed like this. I want rotation. So I'm just going to kick it in just slightly. So one... You can see now it's nice with two. Now you don't have to use two. You can always go here. Now, unfortunately there seems to be some limitations. You can't make it very fine tuned, but say 2.3, just try 2.3. You might prefer that to the two. So then you've got scale and you can modify that a little bit more maybe. Go for 104, just try it out. And you can see pushes out. Now the blue's pretty strong. You can always of course tweak it, change the gradient, still live. And I'm happy with that. 
So click OK. And what it does, it generates lots of layers. So if you create something that's got 50 or 100, you'll have 100 of these star designs. And they're all still live. So you can still, you know, modify them. And I love to do that. So I think it's just nice to select them all. Now, if you go up here, you'll notice what happens. It doesn't offer, and I don't know why, it'd be really nice if it did, but it doesn't do that. But to actually access them again, simply just go to the star. Star design, and now you can see, you get all these options. Now you can also, you can modify them man here, interactively, if you want to do that. Personally, I always find it a bit fiddly doing that. So I prefer just to go here and just modify, say, number of points. And you can see as you increase that, you get a very dramatic design. Now, you can, of course, do exactly the same in Affinity Photo. So if you've got Affinity, this point, I don't think I've used anything that can't be done in Affinity Photo. So anything here, you can do exactly the same in Affinity Photo. And also, if you want, of course, you can always take any of this from here, go to File and Edit in Photo. So you can just take it into Affinity Photo and manipulate it with various filters as well. And I love doing that. It's one of the things I love applying, like deform filter to it, or maybe the mirror effect, especially you've got this lovely symmetrical effect anyway. The mirror really works well with that. And of course, you can still tweak these. You might turn around and say, let's just change that, maybe increase that, decrease it, just try out the values. Maybe modify inner circle, inner radius, and so on. And you can tweak any of these other things as well. Got here the gradient tool. Always select gradient tool, again, go to stroke, and then you can manipulate that. So you can move it around. So reposition it. You can see position it that way. Or maybe move it over here. Or maybe click on there and then think, you know what? I don't really like that blue center. Maybe it could be something else, purple, say. And you can change it. Maybe you want to keep it more like that. Just move that around and so on. To create all kinds of different designs. But also, once you're happy with your design, and I'm quite happy with that design now, I'm just going to group them all. I'm just going to go right click and then group. Just makes it easy to manipulate. And also, of course, you can then rasterize it. If you want to rasterize it, maybe go and apply effects. Like I say, go to File and Edit in Photo, if you've got Affinity Photo, of course. If you haven't got Affinity Photo, unfortunately, it's very limited in text. But you, of course, can always do this. You can go up here and you've got these personas. So you've got Pixel Persona, but it doesn't offer many filter effects. Another option, of course, if you've got other applications, really good ones, I think, are like, obviously, GIMP, Critter. Critter's a really good application, a free application. So you can, obviously, get anything from this, bring it in to Critter and use that. Or maybe use something like Rebel, reasonably priced application as well. But still, I think this is a really nice design. And with this design, I can now manipulate it in many other ways. And say, Layer, and I can go down here and I can rasterize it turn it into a single pixel layer if I want. But as a pixel, obviously as a vector design, I can still manipulate it. And I can manipulate individually as well. Because of course what I can do, I can expand this out. Any point, I can convert all these into curves. All can be converted, so convert to curves. That's obviously gonna take a few seconds. And there you can see now all curves. And of course, that point, you can then go to the node tool and you can then select individual nodes each of these designs. So just go there and you can see then you've got those and you can just select the points and manipulate them in many more ways. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Also, do you love Affinity Designer more than Photo? Do you use both? It'd be really great to hear in the comments whether you like. Sometimes I do these videos, I never know. I have really no idea. Designer, or maybe photo. Would you prefer more photo ones than designer ones? Maybe even publisher ones. I don't use publisher as much. It's one of those applications that sort of sits there. And I think I must use that more often. But don't. But anyway, it'd be great to hear from you about anything about Finity Photo or designer. Bye.